In this video, we're going to talk about 13 things that Germans might have in their apartment. We don't like to generalize, so we're not going to say that all Germans have that, but there's a high probability that they will have a few, some, or maybe all. <laughs> so stick around if you want to know what they are. Hey, I'm Jen, and I'm from Guatemala. And I'm Yvonne, and I'm German. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. So why are we outside today? Well, because the number one thing on our list is that there are no apartment numbers in Germany. So this is actually not a thing that Germans have in the apartment, but it no. like, kind of like starts outside, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> and this is like an actually very, very interesting thing. What do you mean with no apartment numbers? So whenever you have like a, a multi-story house where several parties live, but also in single family homes, um, you have a house number, but no apartment number. And how do you identify then where you have to go or where the mail should be delivered? by their last name. So hmm. every German, or I mean, every pe person living in Germany for, yeah, for that matter, say, yeah. <laughs> um, needs to have their last name on the doorbell and the letterbox to actually receive letters. Hmm. More on that topic in our video above here, which we recorded on how to send and receive letters in Germany. But um, this is kind of like interesting because especially Germany, who is like a country Hoover, a country, <laughs> a country which is like so concerned with like data privacy, has their last names written all over the door. The yeah, which is super crazy, right? And that also means that if you're going to go visit someone, you need to know their last name. Otherwise, you don't know which doorbell, doorbell actually to like ring. Yeah. <laughs> I've had actually a friend who I went to visit them and then they opened the door, but they didn't open the door of their apartment. So I went up and down the stairs like twice. I had to call them like, yo, where do you live? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, we're on the second floor. They weren't Germans though. Usually I would argue in the, stair, um, in the staircase in the hallway you have the names also on the different doors but not everywhere. But not so not always so usually you go until a door is open. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. That would be the ideal <laughs> Hoping case. Hoping that's your friend's door right? <laughs> so now we're gonna go into our apartment to show you the other 12 things that apartments in Germany might have. So come on in. Thing number two on our list is actually house shoes. And because we are so German, we actually have Birkenstocks, which are the most traditional house shoes that you can have. Most Germans have house shoes. Uh, when you arrive as a guest, they may provide you some if they have some extra prepared for guests. Um, so the tradition goes that you arrive at a home, you take off your shoes, um, unless uh, your host uh, tells you that you may keep them. Um, and then they might provide you house shoes, which you put on. Yeah, and that's how you walk around in the German apartment. Thing number three on our list is actually a drying clothes rack, which we actually put here. It's a, very, it's a collapsible one that you do tack, and then you're able to open them like this. And after washing, this is where you hang your clothes because in Germany, uh, most likely there's no dryer. <laughs> so actually you dry clothes naturally with air. Now that you have dried your clothes, hopefully you also wash your, um, your uh, bed linen. And that goes to point number four on my list. Hold on. I'll bring it to you. So point number four on the list is duvets. So these are blankets and in Germany you actually have uh, duvets, they're called. So they're thicker blankets that you put in these duvet covers and they look like this. Oh my God, and they're perfect for winter because they really help you um, be all warm and, 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 and everything. And uh, the duvets, you can get them also in different sizes and different kinds of uh, warmth. So they are for really cold days, for not so cold days. Yeah, I'm gonna say like when I travel abroad, I really miss my duvet because it's so nice and comfortable because you just need one. Um, additional to that, there's the big debate whether uh, German couples use one or two blankets. And in our opinion, uh, most use two. So let us know in the comments below if you are a one blanket or two blanket person, because we would be curious. So for number five, I, I did a quick jump into the kitchen and we're going to talk about German breakfast. Uh, you probably have known, heard, experienced uh, the German breakfast traditions, particularly on the weekend and particularly on Sunday. And I would argue that there is no German breakfast with lecker Brötchen that don't get served on a Brettchen. Wow, that was a Brötchen, Brettchen, whatever. So a Brettchen is like a, a wooden um, a wooden plate, pretty much. Uh, a wooden plate that we have breakfast on. We rarely use real plates for breakfast. And it could be anything boring like this. It could also be a plastic version that also exists. You can say Frühstücksbrettchen to this, yeah? Or it could be something extremely playful, like <clears throat> we use kind of like most weekends, like um, animal, uh, animal style, you know? We have our little um, animal style going on here. So anything that's wooden uh, is usually the case where you have your breakfast on. And of course, the lecker Brötchen, which technically I should have one in my hand, right? Um, go into a Brotkorb. And uh, this is not a typical German one, but we just 
use it for that. It's also very influenced by Guatemala with a little Guatemalan napkin in it, just to bring some color to it. And uh, yeah, usually you have like multiple Brötchen in here and then someone said, pass me the board carpenter and then you just take a Brötchen for the um, breakfast. All right, number six, we're now in our um, tiny bathroom. And um, very quirky thing that um, a lot of expats foreigners post pictures and ask like, what is this and what does it do? And that is the so-called Durchlauferhitzer. So it basically is that little thing there in the corner. And it basically heats up um, water through electricity. So not every flat or house has this. It really depends on how you um, generate uh, electricity and, and, and warm water particularly. But it is quite common for apartments to have that because without that, you would only have cold water. And as you just saw, you have a little regulator on there like minus and plus where you can also adjust the temperature. And um, the hotter it is, the more electricity you pull with hot water. Also a good thing to know when your electricity bill comes in. Number seven is also part of the bathroom. We cannot show you anything in life because we don't have a shower that has glass like walls per se, because um, Germans like glass walls for whatever reason as a shower and they like to keep them clean. So usually you see uh, in the pictures that we are pointing out here, um, this, uh, I don't even know in English the word, it's like a, um, um, it basically cleans the glass, uh, the water from the glass. And if you are a guest somewhere and you see such a thing, you are expected to clean the um, the glass walls after your shower, actually. At least I would say so. Maybe some disagree, but that is my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are going to the kitchen for um, more quirky things in German apartments. All right, so here we are in our kitchen and I'm going to talk about a toaster, which is nothing special or particular. However, um, we use the toaster a little bit different than I would say other nationalities. So I would argue that the um, number one way that you would use a toaster is by putting actually like, like the soft bread that needs to be toasted inside the toaster, move it down and wait until it pops up. Well, we don't really do that. We don't really have this fluffy, fluffy bread too much. We have the German bread, which is like yummy and crunchy. And that, we, if we don't buy it freshly from the bakery on Sunday mornings, we actually have this little pluck tool here. I mean, probably everyone has it, I don't know. And we put our Brötchen, oh, which we don't have right now, but we can get, uh, our Brötchen here on top, and then we toast them and the heat like warms up the Brötchen and makes them crunchy. So everything in Germany, you see Brötchen, like bread rolls on top of a toaster and never inside. Number nine on my list is that because of the regulations for recycling, by the way, if you want to know more about recycling in Germany, you can check out our video. We did a whole video about teaching you how to recycle, what to recycle, where to recycle, all the things. But anyways, because of these recycling regulations that exist in most part of Germany, um, most apartments or houses, they have different kind of trash cans. You have a trash can where you put like all your uh, Restmüll, it's called, like, the, like all the general trash. You have a trash can to put your cardboard stuff and you have a trash can for plastics. So what do I mean? So first of all, there's at least more than one trash can in most German apartments. And second of all, which I don't understand why, every time there's always a trash can under the sink, including our home. And I know you're going to say, Jen, if you hate it so much, why don't you change it? And that's because we don't have space to change it. <laughs> so this upsets me a little bit because in a very efficient country, I don't understand why we all follow the rules of putting the trash there. So it happens very often that you're, you know, you're at a friend's house, you're cooking, or even here at home, we're cooking, I'm working at the sink or something, and every single time there's a need to use this trash can. So everyone asks you, please, can you move? And you're like, no, I can't because I'm in the middle of doing something. <laughs> so I asked this uh, to a friend once and she said, well, what I generally do is I just take the trash can out when I need it and I put it back in. Fair enough, but I must argue it doesn't always happen. But the rule is, or the, the main uh, um, point of my point nine is that there is more than one trash can in German apartments. <laughs> Number 10 on our list is a Brotschneider. Uh, so as the name, I, I said that wrong, I know it's Brotschneider. Uh, and uh, I would argue that mainly the older generation or let's say people uh, that are not that are let's say above 40 or 50 usually they have this at home and we have this at home too actually and that's because Yvonne's parents uh, they asked the sister if she wanted to take it and she said no so Yvonne took it and uh, usually what you do here is you have a button it's very dangerous it's connected to electricity um, and when I press it there's a blade cutting and that's how Germans cut their German uh, bread loaves and how exactly uh, so you put the bread here. Oh, yeah. So you put the bread here and then you you swivel like this and that's how you cut. 
Um, so Germans love their bread, as you might already know. And there are these bread loaves that either you can uh, purchase in the supermarket and uh, the supermarket has a uh, Brotschneider there that you can just put. It's a very fast system or you buy the whole uh, loaf of bread and you cut it at home. Uh, we rarely use it anymore for cutting bread. Now we use it for cutting, um, let's say, salami or cheese or pretty much slices of zucchini that we want to grill. So at the end of the day, it's been very, very helpful. Um, and like I said, I've seen this one mainly in like a uh, grown up apart or like houses, you know, not more, not in our generation, let's say uh, early 20s. I'm kidding. I'm not early 20s, but you know, it's more in the older generation Germans. Uh, number 11 on the list, if you have not noticed, in this beautiful kitchen of ours, is that everything is built in. That means the whole cupboard and everything has been built in the way that, as the name says it, it's built in. So look, this is our refrigerator here. And our refrigerator, actually, it's a whole furniture that is connected with each other. And if you didn't know, and if you're new to Europe, guess what? This is where our dishwasher is. Sorry, washing machine. <laughs> So weird to say it. Our washing machine, yes, it's in our kitchen. Um, so why why is this so peculiar? Well, first of all, uh, if you don't know, when you move to a German apartment, usually you have to buy your own kitchen or you buy it from um, the person leaving the house. And every kitchen is custom made to that specific kitchen. In my case, I always think, uh, what happens if the fridge breaks? Uh, I, we cannot replace that because how do you like take it out? Like you need to destroy the whole furniture. Even if you see here, if you come closer, the doors, they are also built in. They're part of the cupboard. It's wood. And this is actually the door from the, from the freezer. So like I would need to unscrew that. I don't even want to think about it. So, so far, luckily nothing has broken in the past eight years that we've been living here. Um, but I always wonder what happens if something breaks. I don't know. You need to call someone, I guess, which just makes it more expensive. <laughs> Okay, we are back um, to appliances in the kitchen and this is uh, a water kettle, uh, a water boiler, ein, um, uh, what's the German word? Uh, Wasserkocher. Uh, Wasserkocher, yeah, very good. So this is a Wasserkocher and I don't even know if it's that particularly German, Jen claims it is, so I'm just, you know, talking about it. Please let us know if, if it's German or not. And um, basically that's how we boil our water, right? We just put it in, turn it on and it's super fast. Um, and that is the way we boil it. We, we rarely boil it on the stove unless you have like a fancy new induction stove, which is, um, I would argue, faster than this one. Um, but this is very, very typical to have in German apartments, also in offices to, to do a tea or, or whatsoever. Yeah. And um, to our last number, 13, and let me reach over here. So this is just uh, an example. Is of course, no. is of course the famous sparkling water. Now, I've actually uh, learned not to drink sparkling water anymore, but that is, I would say, more of a reason um, because we live in the uh, 100th floor. No, it's like 99 steps to get to our apartment, and I don't want to carry water bottles up here. Um, so this is a sparkling water example. However, what we could do, which I still don't do, but I know tons of Germans who have that, is in order to stop buying bottled water, is to actually have a soda stream or something to um, put sparkles into regular tap water, which um, I'm just not a fan of. So I just stick to still water. But this is very, very typical in other German households. And um, you will uh, be surprised. No. And why do we have this water in our household? Uh, we have this one in our household, um, not actually for this video, but uh, in case my parents visit, because my mom will not drink still water. Um, she's very particular with the sparkling water, so we always have a stash. <laughs> we hope you have learned something new today, or probably you laughed at some of the things that we have shown in this video, but that's okay. <laughs> if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like button and hit that notification bell that's down there at the bottom. This is the easiest way that you can support Simple Germany because uh, this way uh, where uh, YouTube knows that this is good content and will spread the word so other English speaking people in Germany can find uh, this useful video, hopefully. And if you want to go the extra mile, then you can go ahead and buy us a coffee. Uh, there's a link below and uh, the coffee basically um, allows creators like ourselves to um, receive small donations in the form of or the value of a coffee to uh, support us and the channel. Yeah, um, and we will see you then. On that note, we will close this video and we will see you next Monday. Until then, cheers!